Hello friends, today I'll be making a video for better understanding of part B section 1 rule 8 with examples and trick to remember. So here is rule 8, action to avoid collision. The part A of this rule says, any action taken to avoid collision shall be in accordance with the rules of this part and shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, be positive made in ample time and with due regards in observance of the good seamanship. So there are certain keywords in part A that you need to remember. First, taking action in accordance with the rules of this part. Which part? This they are talking about part B, steering and sailing rules. So everything that the rules tell you, you must follow when you are taking and avoiding action. Then the second keyword is, if the circumstances of the case admit, be positive and made in ample time. What they are saying is, you should be sure of what you are doing. If you have decided to alter to starboard, you must take the action very positively. If you are altering to port, do the same. If you are stopping or reversing, you must be positive, you should be sure about what you are doing. And try to take that action in ample time. If the circumstances of the situation allow you to do that. And finally, be consistent with the good seamanship. And just remember that they are using shall in rule number 8, part A. Now let's talk about part B. Any alteration of course and or speed to avoid collision shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, be large enough to be readily apparent to another vessel observing visually or by radar. And then second part of this says a succession of small alteration of course and or speed should be avoided. So what it basically means is let's say you are a navigator and there is a vessel on your head on proceeding just towards you and there is a risk of collision. So as per rule number 14 you decide to alter to starboard. Now rule number 8 says that when you are taking this action you shall take a large action which should be readily apparent, which should be easily seen by the other vessel, whether he's watching you by binoculars or he is observing on the radar. And there are very few places in the rules of the road where they're using the word should. And this is one of those places that when you are making alterations, you should avoid making small, small alterations two, three times to get the same action. Many times at sea, I've seen people playing this game where they make the 50% alteration and then they wait for the other person to make the remaining 50% to bring about a better CPA. So, as per rule number 8, it should be avoided. If you're taking an action, just take a large action to avoid collision. Then part C says, if there is a sufficient sea room, alteration of course alone may be the most effective action to avoid close quarter situation provided that it is made in good time, is substantial and does not result in another close quarter situation. Now if you notice part C, there is no shall used, there is no compulsion that you must take action this manner. But they are saying that if you have sufficient sea room, then alteration of course alone may be the most effective action. So this is a recommendation. Provided that it is made in good time and is substantial. When they say substantial, it means again the same thing. It should be large that you have taken the full action. Because many times if you take a small action and the other person does not really see it apparently that you have taken the action, he may take an action which will counter your action and may result in a close quarter situation. Thus the recommendation says made in good time and it is substantial. Then part D says, action taken to avoid collision with another vessel shall be such as to result in passing at a safe distance. The effectiveness of the action shall be carefully checked until the other vessel is finally passed and clear. And this part is pure requirement. It says that when you are taking action, it shall result that the other vessel will pass at a safe distance. And after you have taken action, you should see its effectiveness and keep monitoring the other vessel until 
she is past and clear. Then the part E says, if necessary to avoid collision or allow more time to assess the situation, a vessel shall slacken her speed or take all way off by stopping or reversing her means of propulsion. So in part E it's saying that if it is necessary to avoid collision and if you find yourself in a situation where you need more time to find out what action to take, basically you need more time for assessment, then a vessel shall slacken her speed, reduce her speed, take all the way off. That means remove all the momentum from the vessel. And it can be done by stopping the engine or by reversing the engine. So you can do that in case you are in doubt that what action to take and if necessary to avoid collision. And finally rule number F which has three parts. And this is one of the most confusing parts for uh, young students. So I'll go through it now. Part F, part 1. A vessel which by any of these rules is required not to impede the passage or safe passage of another vessel shall, when required by the circumstances of the case, take action to allow sufficient sea room for the safe passage of the other vessel. So this rule applies in certain situations where a vessel has not been clearly told that it shall keep out of the way of. Instead, they have been told that you should avoid impeding the safe passage. And one example is a vessel which is constrained by her draft. It is required by a normal power driven vessel to not impede the passage or safe passage of a vessel which is constrained by draft. Part 1 of F says that if you see a vessel like that, like constrained by draft and you are a normal vessel, then if the situation around you allows you, then you take an early action to allow sufficient sea room for the safe passage of the other vessel. In this example, CBD vessel. Just take early action. If you see a CBD, you have sufficient sea room. Take early action so that the passage of CBD vessel is clear. Now let's come to part 2. A vessel required not to impede the passage or safe passage of another vessel is not relieved of this obligation if approaching the other vessel so as to involve risk of collision and shall when taking action have full regards to the action which may be required by the rules of this part. So what it basically saying is considering the same example you are a power driven vessel there is a CBD on your passage. So it says that as per the rules, you are not required to impede the passage or safe passage of that vessel. And you have been told that you must take early action to allow sufficient sea room. That means before a risk of collision existed, you have already taken action most likely. But if you find yourself in a situation where there is a risk of collision, the power driven vessel is still not relieved of this obligation. And the obligation is not to impede the passage or safe passage of another vessel. And the subsection of part 2 says, now that risk of collision exists and you have decided that you are going to take an action, then that action shall be in accordance with the rules of this part. Which part? Part B, steering and sailing rules. And rule number F, part 3 says, a vessel the passage of which is not to be impeded remains fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part when two vessels are approaching one another so as to involve a risk of collision. So part F, part 3 is basically for the vessel whose passage is not to be impeded. As per our example, the CBD, this rule applies for the CBD and it is instructing the CBD that you remain fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part when already Two vessels are approaching one another to involve a risk of collision. So if power driven vessel and CBD find themselves in a situation where there is a risk of collision, then both the vessels remain fully obliged to comply with the rules of this part, part B, steering and sailing rules. Now let me summarize the full rule in short. First part says that when you are taking action, take it in accordance with steering and sailing rules. Then be positive, you should know what you are doing. 
take it in ample time and observe good seamanship then they says that if you are taking an action of either altering your course or speed then take a large action so that anyone watching you by radar or visually should be able to clearly see it and avoid taking small small actions with few time gaps then it recommends that if there is sufficient sea room alteration of course alone may be the most effective action provided that it was made in good time was substantial and it would not result in another close quarter situation part d says that action to avoid collision must result in passing at a safe distance of course when you're taking action the result should be that you're passing at a safe distance and keep monitoring until the other vessel has finally gone clear from the scene e says that if you're in doubt and if you think you need more time then you reduce your speed or slack an all way off by stopping and reversing your engine part f is about the relationship between a normal vessel and a vessel the passage of which is not to be impeded as per these rules so as per the example i gave you between power driven vessel and cbd first the power driven vessel shall ensure that it creates a situation where there is no risk of collision by taking an early action and allowing a sufficient sea room but in case there is a risk of collision it is still obliged to keep the passage of cbd vessel clear and also the third part says that even the cbd vessel is still obliged to keep out of the way now the question that may be asked and is often asked traffic separation scheme you are a cbd vessel there is a vessel on your starboard bow crossing what action will you take so the answer is that you will wait until a risk of collision exists most likely the other vessel will take action i will maintain my course and speed but if a risk of collision exist then i will take action to avoid collision and that will be as per the crossing rules rule number 15 and if i still do not have sufficient sea room to follow rule number 15 of course you can slacken your speed and take all way off because rule number 18 clearly specifies that a vessel which is constrained by her draft shall always proceed with complete awareness of her special condition finally the trick to remember it in sequences imagine yourself being a navigator and when you are on the bridge when you're taking action you must be positive you should know what you're doing okay so imagine that i am the navigator i am being positive i know what i'm doing okay i'm doing everything much before time so there's no stress to me so that is good seamanship then if i'm taking an action either by alteration of course or speed and of course my action will be very large so that the other vessels observing me will be sure of what i'm doing then finally as a navigator i will not be changing the engine too much because if there is sufficient sea room of course i'll just alter port or starboard and make a large action and take it in good time and ensure that the other vessel is finally passing clear and if you really see this sequence it is very very logical this is the way normally any navigator would do finally after considering everything if you think you need more time or you're not sure then you must stop your engine and reverse your means of propulsion another logical step and part f is basically making sure that you understand the relationship between a normal vessel and the vessel the passage of which is not to be impeded i hope this was a useful video for you if you have any feedback or you have any request for a particular topic then please comment thank you for watching